it is important for our member states to pursue structural transformation, reduce their dependence on the export of raw commodities. Organized annually by the UN Economic Commission for Africa, ECA, through its Office for Eastern Africa, the Intergovernmental Committee of Experts, ICE, in 2016, was held in Nairobi to discuss on the theme, Institutions, Decentralization and Structural Transformation in Eastern Africa. For four days, the experts from Burundi, Comoros, Democratic Republic of Congo, Djibouti, Eritrea, Ethiopia, Kenya, Madagascar, Rwanda, Seychelles, Somalia, South Sudan, Tanzania and Uganda discussed key issues and challenges pertaining to the economic and social development of the East African region. Experts in Kenya examined the role of institutions in promoting equitable growth in Eastern Africa. Experts recognized the importance of structural transformation and agreed that the pace of its advancement in Eastern Africa has generally been slower than the pace of economic growth. The vision that we have as leaders could be very much in disharmony with what people actually want. The people who are running businesses, the political environment truly does determine how your business grows or not. Africa really needs to be able to harness uh, all of its potential and I fully agree on the importance of investing in human capital. Public education is both the responsibility of government and also I would say private sector civil society it's all our responsibility. As a side event of the meeting, ECA jointly with Kenya Private Sector Alliance, KEPSA, organized the Davos Tie Run Table under the theme The Followers and Leaders Pact Towards New Horizons. The roundtable hosted by Kenyan TV host Julie Gishuru was held and featured contributions from experts in academia and the civil society, as well as from government officials in Eastern Africa and leaders from the organizing institutions. So, um, an effective leader, therefore, um, needs to be able to understand that there are differences uh, uh, in their nations about what constitutes value. If you do not have responsibilities either as a follower or a leader, then you're dragging the country down. The, the era of individual leadership is gone. We have to move to collective leadership involved institutions. Alongside the plenary sessions, special ad hoc expert group meetings were equally held to discuss social and economic inequality in Eastern Africa, the impact of trade regimes on industrialization, from theory to practice, unraveling sustainable development, opportunities at county level in Kenya. So as a country, I think we are honored and I think we have delivered. Now it is to think about how do we move forward this dialogue? How do we create the space so that decentralization and institutions become critical anchors of structural transformation in this region? If countries purposely create opportunities in different parts of the country, such that the opportunities are not concentrated in a few, two or three large cities, then people will be moving around. So labor mobility is likely to increase the level of people uh, getting together and uh, relating not more as uh, people from one ethnic uh, background, uh, but people from uh, a country, so to speak. We must, for example, advise our governments to use decentralization, not just as a linear process of power transfer from national to sub-national jurisdiction, but as an effective instrument to empower local institutions as the main drivers of their own development. The power is decentralized ultimately from the center, from the centralized authority to the people through the local authorities. If the leadership demands performance such that the leader is ahead of time always, I am sure the other people will keep time. The devolution solves the problem of marginalization. But you can't push to the end. You have to find a way of dealing with marginalization, or at the same time, you are building the macro structures that you enable us to interact beyond the, the local area, beyond the nation, 
to the region and to the world. The meeting recommendations as captured by the final communique of the 20th session of ICE acknowledge that the East Africa region has achieved notable rates of economic growth over the last 10 years and made considerable improvements in many socio-economic indicators. However, disparities still exist and it is crucial to ensure that the future growth is inclusive and sustained. For decentralization to spur development and nation building, I think it has to be contextualized, evidence-based, result-oriented, and people-centered. And for that to happen, we will need to moralize politics and have political stakeholders and establishment with more integrity, accountability, and make sure that control of corruption is part of that package of moral values or national values. What are the institutional structures that govern how politics are done? It could be something that is worth thinking about so that at any one time we can have politics that are positive, that are uh, oriented towards an agenda that is positive to the country's development. The meeting also noted that there are emerging threats to the rapid economic progress in the region. These include declining commodity prices and a slowing global economy and reduced growth prospects in China and the fact that Eastern Africa has not yet successfully diversified its production and export patterns. Many of our countries, especially the commodity dependent ones, we are witnessing that some of their growth prospects are becoming threatened because of the collapse in commodity prices. The productivity of the manufacturing sector is two and a half times better than that of agriculture. So in the first place we grow agriculture and then in the second step we add value to that agriculture so that the income that you get per worker working um, in, in the economy is actually two and a half times if there is actually value addition. In that context, it is great time for the African continent to base its growth and endogenous drivers of economic development. Thus, member states are encouraged to explore domestic and regional economic policies that drive innovation, raise productivity, create new industries, and advance the structural transformation agenda. For the poorest, poorest 10%, uh, the expenditure elasticity of agriculture is about six times. In other words, if they get uh, an extra one, one dollar, one shilling, or one franc, the least, uh, the lowest ten percent, it means so much to that level of uh, income. Do not try and justify devolution, particularly on economic grounds. On institutional grounds, I can understand. The fastest growing economies in the world, whether it's Southeast Asia, or here in Africa, have not been the ones that have devolution. They are the ones that have been centralized. If we don't fix who we are and where we are going and how we define ourselves, we can't define our systems properly. Are our institutions um, helping us to get the best results out of those sectors that can give us the most for our poorest, and two, are we opening up the market space or the economic space so that we can actually optimize um, what Africa is able to achieve? Uh, on the issue of decentralization, is there a link between decentralization and industrialization? Yes, there is a link, but the link can be very indirect. We don't have the political character to implement what the constitution wants. So we'll just go back to these issues as much as we are moving towards setting up policies for development and otherwise, unless the political culture is changed, I don't think we are going to achieve much. This can be achieved through the adoption of smart industry policies as industrialization has been identified as an effective vehicle to accelerate the pace of structural transformation and generate higher productivity jobs. This is not a job for others to do for us that we too have a responsibility to being part of the change that we want. In order to reach out to the youth 
women and other vulnerable groups at the developed level, the United Nations system is supporting county governments to establish business development centers, BDCs. For aspirations to become achievements, we need a new type of contract based on performance and tangible results. Our fellow Rwandans call it imihigo, or the vow to deliver and achieve goals in a specific period of time by following guiding principles and be determined to overcome any possible challenge that may arise. If Africa is raising, one would have thought that its people would desire to stay home and contribute to its transformation. Several recommendations to transform our regions into an integrated, prosperous and peaceful Africa driven by its own citizens and uh, representing a dynamic force in the global arena has been proposed. It is my sincere hope that as experts you will use these recommendations to propose suitable policy options for your respective governments. With conferences like this, with discussions in forums like this, all these issues will have to be conversed, will be analyzed, and then we get a roadmap and way forward in terms of ensuring that uh, this decentralized governance becomes a solution to the social inequalities and uh, imbalances that we've always witnessed in the past. One of the uh, uh, panelists suggested that there is need for us to develop an M&E framework. So it is the M&E framework that is going to come out of this exercise that will help us in terms of how do we track down what we, have, what we are going to implement. And I think there will be a report at the end of the meeting in terms of bringing together the 14 countries to move forward this dialogue in terms of institutions, uh, decentralization and structural transformation. So the issue, as we said earlier, is not really about the individual um, uh, contributions and so on is, is how we can harness that energy collectively to be able then to uh, make this uh, transformational change. <laughs>